Hello, in today's episode, we're going to take a look at early banking. Not prehistoric, but from a long time ago, well before we had what we call today as that of the Federal Reserve. A lot of this will be very basic if you've seen documentaries like Money as Debt, Money Masters, so many different ones. You will not be getting any new information. However, if you're unsure, then I'll let you know very basically how things were done back in the day. For many years, it was gold and silver that was used as money. Gold and silver worked very well because this was a metal, it was an asset that could be held for a long period of time, thus it was easily stored, and if you wanted to hand this down for, through generation, it was very easily able to do so. And what was very difficult for people was transporting large amounts of gold and silver, which is why we have paper money today. And not only was that a problem, but even through theft, protecting your own gold and silver. And a goldsmith would protect you from thieves. Because this way, what people were able to do was take their gold, and I'm even sure they probably did the same thing with silver, take it to a goldsmith, where a goldsmith would put it in their vaults for them, where it was protected. And they would do this over a small fee. And that makes a lot of good sense to do such a thing. And what happened was people would start bringing their gold into the goldsmith and they found out that most of the people that would withdraw gold from their vaults would most of the time take a fraction of what they had. Let's assume that I deposited 10 ounces of gold and I need to buy a horse and the horse costs two ounces of gold. So I go to my goldsmith and I would say I want two ounces of gold. Okay, and he'd give him the two up for me and he would reduce two uh, ounces off my balance. Very simple, very easy. But even then when they gave you the gold or silver, they found out that giving a piece of paper saying this represents so much gold or silver is very easy and then the person I trade this to, the person I buy a horse from, could take this piece of paper and then go to the goldsmith and that gold would become theirs. Now the problem which followed from this is the goldsmith realized that, you know what, I can state that I have more gold than I actually have. Assume that I have a thousand ounces of gold in my vaults and sometimes it's 900, sometimes it's 1100. It, it, it changes from day to day, but I always have so much which brought in fractional reserve banking. Now all of a sudden they accounts of all people could be up towards 5,000 ounces of gold, yet they only have 2,500 in their vaults. And because people are coming, oh, I want 10 ounces, I want 20 ounces, I'm depositing five, it all worked out for them because they never ever ran out of uh, at their supply. But by doing such an incident, at some point, the issues would create problems. And of course, since this period, we have moved to a less sane way of moving money and creating money, which I'll be going over within the next episode.